All right, folks, I am the Urban Sentinel, and in this video, we're going to go over a few topics that keep coming up in the news. A few interesting things I'm going to go over, and hopefully you'll see what I'm talking about, and you'll see where we could be headed. So, got the clipboard, and let's get into it. First, if you remember the Arab Spring, back in the 2010s, multiple countries, uh, Egypt, Libya, Morocco, Iraq, plus a half dozen others throughout the Middle Eastern area, all seem to explode with political uh, dissatisfaction and economic turmoil almost overnight. It didn't quite happen that quickly. The citizens had a building up of grievances against their government, against its leaders. Uh, the cost of living, corruption, restriction on freedoms, uh, these all seem to run parallel to our current situation. And with the impending midterm elections coming up, politicians blustering about uh, hot button topics such as the right to choose and the right to bear arms. All of these things are building into a tumultuous sort of pot boiling up and getting ready to bo boil over. Uh, they're playing their roles as being our last best hope to fix, insert whatever the problem is. Now, I'm not a political analyst, but if you ask me if you've been in the House of Representatives for three terms and you've been in the Senate for two terms, it's time for you to go because either you are incapable of fixing the problem that you said you would fix to get elected or you're sitting at your desk shuffling papers around making new problems that you will fix later on after you get re-elected. But let's move on to the next subject which this leads us into the Venezuelan collapse. An entire nation pretty much, you know, shit the bed. Now they're not the only ones, there are plenty of other countries just in the last 15 years that have also had major downturns, but we're gonna focus on Venezuela. With them, it was high taxes and low services, high cost of living, poor wages, increased inflation, very little to offer. Our stages of inflationary rate increases right now that are going on, the cost of gas at the pump, the fuel that we are spending now will still have an effect on our pockets going into the winter for home heating, natural gas, that sort of thing. Workers wanting better pay and benefits, small businesses either have been shut down or they're struggling to stay afloat. You start combining all of those things, you're going to end up having the same situation that Venezuela went through. And again, it wasn't something that happened immediately overnight. It was something that continued to build up and build up. And then by the time it was noticed, it was too late to effectively turn the heat down and let things cool off a little bit. And that brings us right into the number three, stagflation, the new dirty word. You're gonna hear this a lot. It's the combination of high inflation and high unemployment. Right now, we're currently at 3.6% unemployment rate. That's about 6 million people in the US unemployed, no job. The cost of rising for the basic staples for all of your basic goods and services, no matter what it is, are going up and they will become exorbitantly more expensive as we go through the year. Moving into the end of this year, looking at the holidays coming up, the mantra of getting less while paying more, that's gonna be what every consumer says. And it's just going to be something that becomes the regular, it becomes the norm. With that being said, that has a direct correlation to the number four, the supply chain. The supply chain is stabilizing. Now, listen closely. It is stabilizing. It's not fixed. It hasn't recovered. Most of the experts, the moderate ones, already projected several months back that it would go on into the 2023 period before it's truly leveled off and then recovered to the point where we're in pre-2020 pandemic levels for the just-in-time just supply uh, delivery system. But that's barring, that's without any other hiccups, without any other problems, no new complications like another global pandemic, uh, wars between multiple nations, natural disasters that affect either a large area of production or distribution of any particular good or service. You have internal conflicts that can arise during the elections, destabilizing the government. All those things, those one or two little things that hit at just the right time, at just the right point, can take everything that we've gained back and 
kick it right back down onto the curb, just totally wash it out. And then that of course will increase the tension that people have. That'll increase the number of issues that we have domestically internally with getting things that we need with the availability of supplies with jobs as far as you know people that work in retail people that work in uh, warehousing agriculture wherever it is leading into the number five crime crime is already increasing there are very few places i feel in the u.s where people have not seen an increase in crime now we're going to talk about the murder assault and rapes they are going up but that isn't surprising what is the key thing is the smaller crimes the lesser crimes the robberies the burglaries the shoplifting the car thefts the vandalism all of those have been increasing at a significantly higher level and what it has been shown is historically speaking when those types of crimes increase they then bring in the more violent crimes such as murder assault and rape with them it's effectively speaking when the the low-end petty criminals can get away with all the things they get away with a lot of them become more emboldened more brazen to commit more aggressive crimes later and also there's the criminal element those individuals that just look to do the big crimes and they feel at a certain point law enforcement is not doing anything to stop the small stuff so they can just slip in do what they want to do and get away with it because they know that there's too many 911s going on all around what that happens is citizens get frustrated with the law enforcement not being able to stem the tide of all these small crimes that increasingly come up in number and increasingly come up and become more aggressive more violent but they also get frustrated with the bureaucrats that are running things because they fail to realize that people are tired of being the victim people are tired of being told that they will have this problem handled for them to trust in them to uh just basically take it and then we'll handle it afterwards. They're tired of having to beg for their own safety. They shouldn't have to. They should be able to go freely about their business without having to worry about whether they're going to be the next victim on the street. Now, should we enter into a tenuous state with a near peer, such as China? You know, some, some someone on the large scale that could actually you know pose a real threat to us that's going to increase the problems here domestically that's going to increase the tensions here because again that's one of those factors that can slow down or completely halt any progress that has been made here domestically and we've already been given a forewarning about impending blackouts from power companies due to the excessive use of uh, electricity for keeping cool during the heat waves we've already been told that we're going to have you know some extreme weather and we've seen it with the flooding that happened at Yellowstone things like that aren't going to be a one-off we're still going to have the drought situation in the western areas especially around let's say Lake Mead and you know hydropower plants that rely on water to power major cities and metropolitan areas they're going to have issues you're going to still have the increase in the fuel cost people are still going to have to get to work move back and forth and no matter how much people want to push the green initiative, it still takes fossil fuels to get there. You want people to carpool, great. Someone's still got to fill that tank up. You want people to ride mass transit, someone's still got to fill that tank up. No matter how it looks, it's still going to cost people more money one way or the other to get from point A to point B. Already still, politics and politicians, they're still making headlines. There's a lot of tension and strife, but not just between the politicians themselves in DC. It's not just this party and that party. It's also politicians and their constituents. There are a lot of people that are just simply frustrated and tired of hearing the same song and dance from the same people, election cycle after election cycle, one event after another event going on and on. And again, that's all something that's going to build up to a certain point where one or two little things may be just enough to push everyone over the edge. Now, with that being said, America as a whole could be closer to that edge than what we realize. Because again, it's one of those things that's hard to see, but we could be one butterfly effect. Just one thing could set it off and then we know a storm is coming and we know it's going to get here sooner or later. We just don't know how big it is and how hard it's going to hit when it does arrive. And we don't know 
who's going to be left afterwards. We don't know who's going to come up out of the debris, who's going to be there to hopefully either start over and fix things or at the minimum, not make the situation worse. And realistically, that's all we can look forward to right now is hanging on to what we have, planning for the eventuality of things that are going to happen. You know, there's, there's no calendar date. I don't have anything on here that says this is going to happen here and then this is going to happen here and this will happen here. I don't have that type of info. It's, you know, one of those things where you just know it's going to happen and you can feel that it's getting closer. And the best thing I can do is say, just do your best, keep prepping, and I'll catch you later.